Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another how to draw video. Today I am going to be showing you how to draw a, a chibi who's wearing a kimono. Uh, and we're going to do it in such a way that you can change the pattern of the kimono after you've done the illustration. People like to know the size I'm working at, so I put this square in place. It's five inches on all sides. That works out to around twelve and a half centimeters. And I'm just going to dive on in and start working on this uh, drawing right now. I hope to do this whole first part um, real time. And I'm beginning by drawing just a basic uh, circle for the head. I'm going to keep it in the upper uh, one-third or so of the frame. Uh, and instead of going into any details of the head, let's just go ahead and start working uh, on the body. And um, my idea with this is to have uh, the kimono uh, done in such a way that we can cut out the kimono shape with a knife. So this right here, believe it or not, is going to be like the collar underneath the chin. Um, but see if you can follow along with this. I'm going to do it, draw a sleeve like so for one of the arms. Like they're almost like they're kind of dancing or um, showing the kimono, showing off the kimono to the viewer, let's say. And uh, I would encourage you to make this drawing your own. There's no reason to follow line for line everything that I'm doing. Um, but basically what I want to focus on is this concept of creating a shape that can be cut out. So you got the two sleeves and this central area is also going to be part of the illustration. Uh, those of you who know about the traditional kimono uh, will know that this this band of cloth that goes right around the abdomen is called the obi. So that's what I'm drawing here, and it's sort of a wide um, rectangular-ish <laughs> shape. And I've had it come up so that it sort of um, crosses over the area where the bottom of the sleeves are. And we're going to get into a little more detail in a moment, but um, let's just go ahead and move on to drawing the lower part of it, which is would be the bottom of the kimono, sort of looks like a, a long skirt, I suppose. And I'm going to give it a kind of a curving line here. And then just do a couple of very simple shapes for the uh, feet. Now, people who draw chibi characters, they may work out a formula for uh, how many heads tall it is. I would say this one is basically three heads tall, somewhere around there. And I'm going to go ahead and do some very simple uh, hand shapes here. Generally speaking, chibi characters don't have super detailed hands. And I can see now that I've done it a little off, a little off center. Doesn't really matter though. The, the square, I put the square in place honestly just to show the uh, size that I was working at. So this basically shows you my concept. Now, what I'm going to do at the end of the illustration is take this area here um, that comes beneath the collar above the obi and this area down here. We're going to cut it out. Uh, and that way we're going to be able to slide in basically any pattern we want to um, to change the, the uh, kimono pattern after we finish the illustration. I'm going to zoom in here so that we can start working on the details of the uh, head and face. Alright, so in a lot of ways this uh, initial circle was just a placeholder and uh, now is when we can really begin to uh, start refining this into the shape of the head. Uh, I think the character will look more lively if the head is tilted to one side. So you can already see me uh, beginning to sort of uh, suggest you know, and I guess I'll put a line here to give us some sense of what I'm doing here. Uh, that the, the girl is tilting her head over to the side. And I suppose we can go ahead and erase that first uh, line right there. Um, why not? Because the, the, with chibi characters, the eyes are often very low on the head. Let's go ahead and put a couple of uh, guidelines here. Those of you who are into drawing chibis, you have a lot of experience. You probably don't even need guidelines. You just can jump in and draw the eyes as you see fit. But uh, for those of you who maybe haven't drawn so many chibi characters, it can be helpful, especially if you have trouble uh, getting the eyes to match one another, you know, to be the same size. So I'm drawing the pupils here um, 
or not the pupils, really the irises. And uh, I, I guess rather than draw one eye at a time, which I think can lead to you having troubles matching one eye to the other, I'm going to draw both of these uh, iris shapes one after the other. And since the head is maybe going to be turning just a little to one side uh, in a cartoony way, I can make this one just slightly narrower uh, left to right uh, compared to this one. And now let's go ahead and draw the uh, eyelash lines. I don't want this video to be so much about how to draw a chibi's face, because uh, it really is supposed to be about the kimono. But I figured if I don't teach them how to draw the face, they're going to be up in arms. Krilly, how dare you? <laughs> so you can see me a lot of times with chibi characters, the uh, eyelashes, the upper eyelashes, are the only lashes we see. Uh, although you may see a little uh, fold a line that suggests the fold of the uh, eyelid. I'm going to go ahead and put um, eyebrows, sort of cheerful, innocent looking eyebrows there. And uh, let's go ahead and put a highlight, one highlight on each side. And uh, I'm going to, rather than drawing the pupil, I am going to draw just a sort of a little, looks like a crescent roll, a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> if you will, uh, down here at the bottom. This is going to be a slightly lighter area when I uh, color it in. And if you don't like to draw the nose, you are in luck because we're just going to skip the nose today. You don't need to draw nose. Noses are optional when you're drawing a chibi character. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a uh, cheerful looking mouth though. Actually, I've got to erase a little bit more here. Yeah, we skip the nose. You don't need a nose. But you can add a little dot of a nose. I definitely have almost never seen a chibi character with a really big, bold nose. And there you go. I think we could uh, maybe do the suggestions of ears, but the hair very often uh, covers up the ears. And speaking of hair, I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw some right now in my standard approach of having the hair sort of miraculously part around the eyes so as to not obscure uh, the eyes. Otherwise, I spent all this time drawing the eyes and then I end up covering them with the hair. Can't have that. And yeah, basically um, you should feel free to do whatever hairstyle you like uh, in this situation. I'm going to try to keep it somewhat simple and I may refine a this later on. Uh, when I get to the time-lapse part of the video. But uh, let's try giving her... So, like, the hair has been pulled back and is able to uh, flop out in different ways. Works for me. But I'm sort of eager to move on, to be honest with you, to the uh, kimono part of the illustration, which in this case is really going to be mainly about what I called the obi there, adding some details uh, to the obi. So let's go ahead and uh, wind up this part of drawing. Uh, wind it down, I suppose I should say. <laughs> wind it over so that we can be done with drawing the face and uh, shift focus and uh, show you some of the details of the kimono. All right, so first I'll do the collar here, and uh, those who are serious about kimonos would tell you that you got to have this collar, this interior collar, overlapping in this way, so that it's the right hand side overlaps the left. I suppose it would be the, for the person wearing the kimono, the left would be overlapping the right. Can you make it any more confusing, Krill Dog? <laughs> but that's basically what you're going to do there. Uh, and I'm going to separate off a little section here for what I believe is called the obi age, uh, this sort of uh, softer looking um, cloth that is underneath the obi and is visible uh, only on the top, as I understand it. And then there's this cord that goes across the middle, and I believe that is called the obi jime. And uh, sometimes there's like a decorative uh, knot. I can't pretend that I'm doing this accurately, but hopefully good enough for chibi purposes. 
And that, believe it or not, should uh, finish off the details of the uh, kimono. Now, uh, bear with me here. I am going to do an awful lot of this uh, in time lapse right now, but I, I do want to try to keep this video to a reasonable length. And uh, like I said, I want you to make this your own. Don't feel like you have to color it uh, or ink it or do any of these things uh, in the exact same way that I do. Do your own thing. But uh, I'd love it if people will use this basic concept. I'd love to see if anyone else um, who has origami paper in the house or even like gift wrapping paper, any kind of paper really could be used for this project. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, refocus the camera so that we can see the whole thing. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't do the uh, shoes. Let's do that before we move on to the final coloring stuff. Yeah, see, I thought I was all done, but actually I was getting ahead of myself. We do have to add some uh, of the sort of Japanese uh, sandals down here. And I always like to draw the line here for the big toe. Um, just a little off to one side, so as to suggest that the, you know, the strap falls between the big toe and the rest of the toes. There you go. That wasn't so hard, was it? And now we're finally able to go on to the coloring phase. Bear with me. I'm going to go through an awful lot of stuff real fast right now with the help of my good friend Old Man Time Lapse. <laughs> I always come and save your hide. You think you'd be a little more grateful. Uh, and then we will be back to do the fun part of sort of cutting out these shapes and then seeing if we uh, can complete the project in such a way as so as to make a changeable kimono pattern. All right, well, you can see I couldn't resist adding a few touches of my beloved white gouache. Uh, very nice for doing uh, highlights. It's an opaque white paint. Dilute it with a little bit of water, and then you should get just the consistency you need for making uh, such highlights. But now I'm going to take a hobby knife, and I'm going to begin cutting uh, as carefully as I can along the inside of this uh, sort of contour line of the kimono. Now, first uh, off, I put down a protective uh, pad, I should say. You know, don't, don't do this on the dining room table. Because <laughs> the knife, uh, by design, is going through the page and then uh, cutting underneath. But they make special uh, pads for that. Otherwise, otherwise, just a nice thick piece of uh, cardboard uh, should do the job. But you can see what I'm doing, just sort of cutting along here. And uh, there is nothing more boring than watching somebody <laughs> cut something out with an exacto blade hobby knife. So uh, let's go ahead and do this part in time lapse. All right, well, you can see that we already get the effect, and this wasn't even intentional. This is just this pad here that is used, as I said, for protecting the table. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the fun part of bringing out some origami paper. If you have some in the house, you are ready, uh, once you complete your illustration, to start having fun changing the pattern of the kimono. So, yeah, there you go. Just uh, kind of fun to see how every time you put something else in there, it, it rather drastically changes uh, the look of the character. And I even have some fancy, this is quite fancy uh, uh, paper that came from Japan. I think this is going to look quite lovely uh, when we get it in there. Oh, look at that. Huh? What do you think, huh? And then let's do one more. Which, well, I mean, I, might, I may only do this video one time. I might as well. <laughs> Might as well get the most out of it. I even decided, just for fun, to take a piece of uh, Japanese newspaper and see what happens when you put that underneath. It kind of works. It kind of works. Uh, so there you go. That's my little video on uh, making a chibi character with a kimono uh, that you can change the pattern on. Of course, this video can't be done until I add some blushies. One on the left and one on the right. 
<laughs> so give me just a second, I'm gonna go grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them, like the Chibi book, the natural book for me to tell you about after this video. Uh, focused 100% on Chibi illustrations, The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and my very latest book, The Two Pencil Method. I really cannot say thank you enough uh, to those of you who choose to support me by picking up any of those books. But let me go ahead and lay down this pink blushy marker. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.